What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and we're going to be doing a logic tutorial today because there are a few different logic circuits that I've used uh, mainly involving timers and sequencing that I haven't really fully explained in, in past videos and I want to make sure that you guys can not only use these circuits to do necessarily what I've done but also use these circuits and adapt them and come up with better ways to, to make creations just you know that much more awesome. But as you can see we've got this really nice platform set up here uh, which is just perfect for doing logic tutorials and coincidentally getting thumbnails for a video that would otherwise not have a thumbnail. We're going to start off with the first circuit and the first circuit is actually going to be from back when we did the uh, Pictionary. So we did Pictionary in Multiplayer Monday and if you haven't seen that video I'm going to put the link for that in the description below. But basically as part of the Pictionary we had a two minute timer and as part of the timer we needed to be able to interrupt the timer at any point in time but not have it reset when you interrupt it but rather stop at that point wait for the next point. Um, so the way I, I actually came up to do this is instead of using one timer, because the problem with a single timer is if you turn a timer, timer on, let's say, for one second, uh, let's turn this on actually for a little bit longer, five seconds, just so we can really see it. So we can turn it on, but even if we turn it off, you can see the pulse still stays. And that's kind of a bit of a problem because there's no way to really interrupt that. The pulse is going to get to the end. So what I did is I set up binary bits along the entire way. So each bit is two NOR gates and an OR gate. And it's pretty much the principles for any circuitry you want to do. If you ever want to store a value, uh, for example, have a circuit remember something, this is really one of the easiest ways to do it. And so we're going to set up a few bits here, for example. Uh, we'll just, you know, we'll just set up four because we don't want to go too crazy here. Actually, you know what? We'll set up five and we'll put them each on a one second interval just to really illustrate the thing. Now, for the Pictionary, we had 120 of these each on one second intervals. So it was a very lengthy process. So we're going to wire them up like this. So they're all off in the default off position. The OR gate on the top will be considered the output bit. And then we've got a set and a reset bit. And so basically what we did is we did this. We had a bit like this and then a timer and then a timer and then a timer and then a timer and then a timer. And, a timer. and each timer is set to one second. And so we have our start switch. That'll be our start switch. And this right here will be our interrupt button. And so when somebody buzzes in, this will simulate buzzing into the Pictionary. And so for the interrupt button, we needed another bit, which is the interrupt bit. So hold on, let's just give us a little bit more space here. So we needed another bit, which was our interrupt bit, and that would be the button here. And then we needed a reset and a switch. So over here on the, uh, we'll grab the paint tool again. The green would be control, oh, you know what, that's really hard to see. The white switches here would be controlled by the player up at the Pictionary level. And this red switch here, we'll, we'll make this one red. This would be a player buzzer. And so a player buzzer would activate the interrupt bit. So this bit would be off, and you can see there, if we activate this with a buzzer, it turns on, and then the reset would turn that off. So it's really simple. So between the player and the person resetting, that would fight the timer. Now, the and, the bit here would then lead to a NOR gate, which basically says, as long as you're not interrupted, you can continue the timer. And so the switch starts the, by setting the first bit, which in turn outputs to the first timer, which when it's complete sets the second bit, which outputs to its timer, which in turn goes to the next spot. And that's all fine and dandy, except for one little step in between, which is the AND gate. So once this timer has completed its one second, it goes to the AND gate. For it to continue on, the interrupt switch has to be off, and that'll set the next bit. It goes to this timer, to this one, this AND gate needs this. This goes and sets the next bit, which goes to that timer, to this which in turn gets the feed from that, which sets the next bit, which goes to this timer, and so on. And the, the pattern just keeps repeating itself all the way up to the top. And so what you end up with when you're done, and this would be your final uh, output here, the buzzer output would be right here. And so what you end up with when you're done is a timer that will time one second intervals, but if we hit the buzzer, it'll stop at the nearest second. And you can change the intervals of these. Obviously, the more timers you do, the uh, the longer it would need. But then when we hit the resume button here, it'll finish that last second and then buzz a very quiet buzzer. Then we could, of course, do this and just reset the, uh, the circuit by turning off the switch. Now, of course, there isn't actually a, a master reset for all these bits. So for the switch, I, I just did that with a really simple NOR gate and the switch leads to a NOR gate. 
which in turn leads to all the bit resets for every single bit all the way down the 120 bit line. And so each bit basically stores the position of the timer. You can see there, boom, we'll hit that button. That'll stop at this next second. And then we hit the, oh, we teleport. We hit the resume button and it continues going. So this is a really cool, simple interrupt timer. Uh, you can use this for all sorts of things. And then when we hit this switch C, it will reset all the bits there. All right, so the next thing I want to look at after this uh, really simple interrupt timer is I want to look at a scanner because I used scanners in the... Um, in the following AI car, as well as in the portal companion cube. And I kind of showed the scanner circuit, but I didn't really explain how to set one up. And so the premise is really simple. You can have a bunch of sensors around a vehicle if you want it to sense stuff and uh, you can do it that way. Or the other option of course, is to have just one sensor that goes back and forth. And so if we take one sensor here, we put it to 30 degrees and then we go like negative 60 and then positive 60 on a loop, right? And we can, uh, we can turn this on with this switch here in the front. So now we have a scanner here. And of course, the problem is if the scanner senses us and we try and, let's say, have this scanner hooked into a thruster, for whatever reason, we want that thruster to be activated, it's only going to activate for the short period of time we're in front of the sensor. And let's say we want it to activate as long as the sensor keeps scanning us until we move away for a long enough time that it doesn't scan us anymore. So the simple solution to that, of course, is a binary bit. And so we add a bit here and a bit here and like that. And then we go boom to boom to boom to boom. And we hook this up into a thruster like so. And when the sensor activates, we set the bit. And that's great, but now the thruster will never turn off. And so to turn it off, we send the bit to a timer and the timer goes for let's say a second and then turns off the bit. And so now if you stand in front of it, it'll set. But you can see there, even if we stand in front of it again, the timer, because of the way the timer mechanics work, it will finish its time and still shut off the bit, even though we're still in front of it. It'll override any attempt we have at trying to turn on that bit um, because, of again, of how those timer mechanics work. And so that's not really uh, a good way to do things. And so what you need is you need an interrupt timer and kind of like that timer, except it's going to reset constantly. So it's a little bit easier to build. So all we do is we put down a series of bits and we're going to go with a probably just a one second interrupt here. And each one uh, should be max like 0.1 seconds. Now, depending on how fast your scanner goes, you may or may not need to speed this up. If your scanner is moving really, really quickly, then you need to move to slow this down or to make this a lot faster. And basically what happens is this is the length of time a person has to be standing in front of the sensor for, for it to trip. And so if a sensor is moving slowly like this one, 0.1 seconds is enough. But if I were to set this to one second, for example, it would never reset because there's never a period in time in which I'd be in front of the sensor for a full one second. And so we do that. And then we hook up a series of AND gates like so. And then we hook up a single NOR gate and the NOR gate feeds from the sensor. And so basically what that says is as long as the sensor is not activated, you can continue moving through the timing chain of 0.1 seconds to make up a total of one second. And so as long as the sensor is not activated and we can go AND gate goes to this, 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 and just chain our way all the way up And then that last timer goes and resets the bit. And so now if we stand in front of the sensor, you can see every time we're still in front of the sensor, the timer starts to go through the sequence, but every time it senses us still in front of the sensor, it interrupts and that bit stays on the entire time. And this is how the AI works. So this is how the following car continues to run away from you, except instead of a one second version of this, it has a 30 second version of this. So it's literally 30 times what's here inside of it. And it has two of those, one for each of the side, one for both the sides to turn left and turn right. And so that's how it uses, that's sort of its brain and the guts behind it. And then there's also a whole other series of checks that it does um, with some other external sensors. If you want to make a creation that can detect things and continuously detect them, or if you want to make something with sort of security cameras or something like that, this is a really way to do, good way to do it. And you can see there, as soon as we step away from it, it'll complete the timer and it'll in fact shut off the thruster and then it'll continue to move. So as soon as we get back in, boom, thruster turns on instantly, and that interrupt circuit keeps working its magic.
and then boom, you can see there it shuts off. So it's a really simple build, really cool. All right, so the next circuit I want to show you guys is, uh, it's another one that's been sort of asked a little bit, and it was the, uh, the there was a question about making a cooldown circuit. So a circuit where you press a button uh, or a switch or something. Uh, I think it's a button, and uh, after the button's pressed, then you can't repress the button or you can't activate it. You have to, the circuit will run its way through and then it'll, it won't let you reactivate the button until it's completed. And uh, so there are a few ways to do this. Obviously you could do this with the interrupt timer with the binary circuit, but I want to show you guys a really cool way that I did it. And the reason why is um, I did this for the spinner in the multiplayer Monday that we just did. And I thought this was a really neat circuit. And the reason why is it's a button press circuit. So it'll only activate on the button press down but when you let off the button, you can hold it for as long as you want. But as soon as you let off, you can't press it again until you hit another button to reset it. And I'll show you guys how to hook it up with a secondary button to reset it the way I did. But then we can also swap that button out for a fixed timer. Now, if you wanted to make just a really simple cooldown circuit after a fixed period of time, obviously you could just do uh, add a binary bit like so. And you do your simple binary bit circuit. You have your button go to that. And then you have your... Uh, thingy like so and then this sets the timer for like you know whatever five seconds ten seconds let's say which goes back and sets that bit and then this or gate here would set off your controller and blah 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 right so you could go like this or this or gate would activate your thruster and you know it's gonna go and it's gonna go and even if I press the button again it won't do anything until that timer resets now of course the pain with this is that this timer has to completely deplete and if I try and press the button now it's stuck on that cooldown so that's how you can make a cooldown circuit all right so obviously there's the simple way to set up this uh, really simple timer cooldown sort of deal um, but instead we're gonna do it uh, the way I like to do it which allows you to hold the button initially let's say you have like some sort of rapid fire cannon and then after you hold the button you want it to cool down um, and so to do that we need initially at least one binary bit like so and we're going to need a second one as well. And the two of them are going to be really, really simple. The one on the left is going to sense when we push the button down. So we'll make that one white. And the one on the right will sense when the button comes up, which we'll make red. So when you press the button down, you want to generate a tick. And to generate a tick, you just use a timer set to one tick with an exclusive OR gate. And so as you hit the timer and the exclusive OR gate, like so, you can see there, it'll blip that OR gate for one tick. And we're going to use that tick to set this, uh, this gate here. Now, there's going to be a few conditions that allow the thruster to go. But right now, you can see we can just uh, hit that gate. And you can see there we can hold the thruster. Right, and we can hold it on. But now, of course, the thruster's on forever because it's only wired into that one that one binary bit so we'll just have to reset that manually for now boom and this will be the reset on this one and that'll reset them both so it's pretty simple so now we have to confirm the button off so this is definitely sensing the button down you can see there as soon as it senses the button down that one activates now the button off is detected really simple and it kind of works on a, the premise of so here's the button off boom the button is off on the nor gate but that on its own isn't going to tell you the button has been pressed already. It's just going to tell you that the button is currently off. But if we connect it to this bit through this AND gate, then that'll tell you that the button has been pressed. Because once you press it, you set that AND gate. But as long as you continue to hold the button, you won't satisfy the NOT condition. Now, as soon as you let go of the button, the NOT condition gets satisfied with that gate. And so it goes, okay, great. You've pressed and released the button, which in turn has to shut off the motor, which means as long as you press and release the button, we use a NOT gate to not allow you to continue holding the thruster. And so now we have a very simple reset circuit. And so we can press the button, and as long as we're holding the button, that thruster will continue to go, but as soon as we let go of the button, that thruster shuts off, and we can't press the button anymore, it won't do anything until you hit the reset button. Then of course, the way to do this with a timer, if you don't want to do it with a reset button, is really simple. We could take the output of this gate here, the output of the off switch gate, hook that into our, let's say, our 10 second cooldown timer, and that 10 second cooldown timer in turn will restart both of these. Now, of course, as it was before with the other one, it's actually gonna be half the cooldown time, so it'll be five seconds. So you see, we can hold the button for as long as we want, let go of the button, and that timer will start. 
and that's your cooldown timer until you can press the button again. That timer has to fully go and then fully deplete. And then boom, we could activate it again. So that's a really simple way to make a circuit that uh, uses a button. Of course, we could replace the button with a switch uh, if you wanted it to be switch activated. And again, it will do the same thing. So we can hook the switch up to this, up to this, and up to this. And of course, that will do the exact same thing. So as long as the switch is on, that thrust will be on. But as soon as we turn that switch off, you have to wait for that cooldown timer. Now, with a switch, it's kind of lost. Uh, if you do it with a switch, it's a lot easier to do it with just a single binary bit and a switch. But uh, of course, you can do it this way mainly for the button control to sense the button up and the button down. But anyways, guys, as you can see, I have a lot more workspace and uh, I definitely am in need of some more logic tutorials. So... Uh, I, I did get a few suggestions for some tutorials, and I hope I covered some of them here. Um, but if you guys have any more suggestions for logic tutorials, obviously post them in the comments down below. I really just wanted to show some of these circuits because uh, these are some of the circuits we've used in Multiplayer Monday, and I've never really shown. Well, this one is actually just from my own AI stuff. But we used this circuit in Multiplayer Monday, as well as this one for the Pictionary, and we never really showed any of these. And I wanted to make sure you guys understood how they worked, and just to show you some really simple things. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did like this video, make sure you hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It helps out the channel very, very much. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all next time.